Hi, welcome to the Sky Studio tutorial series. Sky Studio brings extensive customization without sacrificing performance, so you can build beautiful and engaging content. Today we're going to talk about how to customize the stars in the sky. To get started, let's make sure we're all kind of working from the base, same base scene. In Sky Studio's asset folder, you'll notice we have a folder called Tutorials, Basic Starter. I'm going to go ahead and just duplicate that scene so I don't modify the original, and I'm going to open it up. I'm going to start by populating a, um, a good default sky for us to talk about. And so let's go to Sky Studio, Set Up Sky. And let's pick the preset to load in called Night Sky, Clear Sky with Stars. This will give us a sky that just has stars with no clouds or anything to get in the way. So you'll notice we have a nice like light, lightish blue to dark blue sky, there's a, and there's a moon and one star layer. So, Let's take a look inside of, you'll notice your sky system controller. Let's get to our sky profile. That's where all of our sky settings always live in Sky Studio. And you'll notice now that the star layer checkbox is enabled. That's what brings in the stars. So if you turn it off and on, that's how you can remove them or add them. Um, there are other star layers you can add, star layer 2 and star layer 3. Sky Studio supports up to three different uh, distinct types of stars. And so you can create uh, three different um, kind of like small stars or maybe like a, a large artistic star, uh, whatever kind of variety you need, but we give you up to three uh, varieties. Um, and so let's go ahead and talk about star layer one and look through it. So in Sky Studio, um, you can, there, there are quite a few options out the, out the box, um, but as you kind of click and expand some of these, it'll reveal more options. Um, you'll notice that you can increase the size. The density is very high right now, so doing that would cause the stars to clip into each other. Um, but it's important to note that as you adjust the density, Sky Studio will calculate the best spot for the stars so that they don't collide into each other. So you always get a nice clean distribution um, that's kind of throughout the sky, but it's but seemingly random. Um, you'll notice everything is calculated in real time on the GPU, so all the adjustments are nice and fast. So we can bring the density down. We can do the size up or down. And then uh, let's take a look at, you'll notice there's a nice soft edge on these stars. That may be what you want. It also may not be what you want. And so that's something called edge feathering. That's a feature that's on many of our different sections like the sun and the moon as well. Um, and you can go ahead and you can bring that down if you want to get a hard crisp, uh, like a circular cutout. Um, or you can increase it to get something really soft, more like a sun, how like a sun would be set up. Um, let's take a look at bringing this down a little bit, kind of just playing with the settings here. Um, bring the density up, and then let's look at some of the other options. So the twinkle amount is how much the stars will fade uh, in and out absolutely. So I think, so let's bring it down to zero. You'll notice the stars don't animate at all anymore. They're just static circles. And then as I bring it up, to all the way to the right, you'll notice the stars fade all the way in, and then go all the way out. And we call that the twinkle amount. It's how much it fades in and how much it fades out. So um, depending on whatever look you're going for, um, you can adjust that to be, you know, maybe only goes to half, 50% each way. Now the twinkle speed is the speed at which this animation uh, will happen at. So if you want to get a, a faster kind of pulse, you can pull it up. It's a little more visible if I do that. So it gets a little kind of crazy disco scene-y. Um, so, or you can bring it all the way down to get a kind of a soft, smooth, rolling feel. You can um, adjust the color of the stars. So maybe you do something like yellow or red. And each star layer will let you configure these, these properties separately so you don't have to have all stars be the same color. Um, and so let's go ahead and make these, uh, make these a little yellowish. That looks nice. Um, and then another common thing people want is they want to do custom custom star textures. So let's go ahead and let's just do that in a separate in a separate star layer. So let's go ahead and add star layer two. Scroll to the bottom now. You'll notice there's a new section uh, to control this feature. And by default, when you create a star layer, it starts with density zero. But let's go ahead and bring it up a little bit. Uh, then I usually like to wave the the size around because it helps you see. Uh, helps you see which stars you're, you're actually controlling here. You can see I'm working with these green ones. Um, and let's go ahead and replace this with a texture. So click Use Custom Texture. 
And you'll notice two options revealed. There's uh, texture is sprite sheet animation. And if you click that, um, you can say that this texture I'm about to provide is actually a flipbook animation sequence from a single image. Um, we, I talk more about uh, the animation, the sprite sheet animations in the sun and the moon tutorial, and I do an example. Um, but basically, you just have one texture and you tell it how many rows and columns in Sky Studio will animate at any frames per second you like uh, through that little sequence of images. It's a really powerful way to build completely custom animations that are unique to your game um, with, without sacrificing performance. Uh, so let's go ahead and do Star Texture 2. And Sky Studio ships with quite a few textures by default, so if you search for Star, let's go ahead and pick the classic uh, five-pointed star. and. Notice we pull up the size, now we have our own little custom stars throughout the sky. And you can look around, they're all evenly distributed, and they're not clipping each other. Um, so we can go ahead and we can do all the normal things, play with the densities and stuff. Um, and let's go ahead, you'll also notice that some options that revealed themselves are the rotation speed. So say you want these stars to actually move a little bit, because they can be a little boring. Um, now that they're not just circles, we can go ahead and if you move it to the right, these stars will actually move uh, clockwise. And if you move them to the left, the stars will move counterclockwise. The further you move them to either direction, uh, negative or positive, is how fast they will rotate. So if you want it to move very slowly, uh, move it to like 0.05 or 6 or you know whatever, whatever you want to do there. And you can also bring in an additional another star layer, like we were saying before. Um, so we can go ahead and let's just keep this one nice and simple, bring the density up a little bit. And there you go. So we have a, a lot of stars now, and uh, it's a little crowded, um, but for the sake of a demo, I think this is fine. And you'll notice that the stars right now are kind of running straight into the horizon. Um, that may or may not be what you want in your game. We mentioned this in the first tutorial video, but you can easily control that if you go to the first section, which is the sky settings, and you'll notice something called the star start and the star transition length. This determines uh, the position in the sky where the stars can start, uh, begin being visible, and then there's a fade that kind of fades them in, and that's the transition length. So we can make it really visible if we kind of pull the transition length pretty low. Uh, then now let's move this up and down. See how it clips the stars out uh, right at that spot? So um, right now it's a pretty abrupt uh, cutout. And so if we want to make it softer, we can make the transition length a little bit higher. And you'll notice that now there's a fade that pulls those stars in. So now if we look around the sky, it keeps them off the horizon from looking strange, and we only have them up above us and fading in at the distance. So another quick thing to mention is, um, yes, you can add all of these different star layers, you can enable every feature, but something important is that each one of these checkboxes, when you enable them, there is a performance cost associated with it. So if you're working on mobile class hardware, um, you'll want to just probably use maybe one or two uh, star layers. Um, everything is, is additive in the cost of performance. Um, and that, that's, the, that's true for other things as well. Like if you're on desktop class, you know, you can, depending on what your performance constraints are, you can enable many of these boxes. But if you're looking to really uh, keep your app, uh, you know, your game really lean and performant, try to use as few of these boxes and keep them off if you're not using them as possible. Thanks for tuning into this video, and I'll see you in the next tutorial video soon.